Hey everybody, I am Shelly. I'm the Children's Director at Pine Terrace Baptist Church and I just want to welcome you to our kitchen. Um, one of the things that most of you uh, who know me well know that I love to bake. And so today we're going to have a little lesson in uh, what we call matzo bread or unleavened bread. Um, because this Sunday we get to do something a little special that we haven't been able to do in quite some time, and that is to observe the Lord's Supper. Um, there are two ordinances that we participate in as Baptists. One is um, baptism, and one is the Lord's Supper, and we get to do both of those this coming Sunday, so we're very excited about it. But we also know that there are a lot of you who are at home um, who are going to be there, to have the, the cup of juice and, and the bread that we provide. So we want to make sure that you have what you need so that you and your family can participate in this at home as well. So one of the things uh, that I'm going to show you today, we're going to make unleavened bread. What is that? That's basically just bread without yeast. Some people call it matzah. You can buy it at the store. Um, when I was growing up, we actually just used crackers for this. And you can do that too if you want to. <clears throat> but our kids usually go to the store and you see bread that is that already has yeast in it. And that's what people used to do in Bible times is they would make loaves of bread. But there was a particular time when God asked his people not to put yeast in their bread. So today we're going to take a few minutes and just show you a way that you and your family can do this at home. All right, there are four simple ingredients to, to this. So you need a half a cup of warm water. You need a tablespoon of olive oil, or you can use whatever kind of oil you have at your house if you don't have olive oil. You need two cups of all-purpose flour, and you need some kosher salt or sea salt will work as well if you want to do that. So I'm actually going to try this in my, um, in my little blender thing over here, my food processor, and see if it works. <laughs> so we're gonna put two, two cups of flour in here. And, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on here and open this up and we're gonna put tablespoon of olive oil. Alright, we're going to pulse that. Alright, and then we are going to just add this water a little bit at a time. So I'm going to turn this on low and we're going to add a little bit want it too um, sticky, but you do want it to be able to um, roll it out whenever we get done. So you can tell it's starting, starting to thicken up a little bit. take this out and give it a try. See? It's not too sticky. Alright, so we're going to flour our surface and what I forgot to tell you is that I am preheated my oven to um, 450 degrees. Now, the recipe actually calls for 500, but um, I know how my stove cooks and so you probably need to just judge that by how your stove cooks as well. So we just want to work this out just a little bit. And I'm actually going to just break some of this off. And let's just sit that in there for a second. And we're going to roll this out really thin. As thin as you can get it. So if you don't have rolling pin, you can do what I did when I was little. My mom had a glass. We used a glass for a rolling pin. Um, it was always fun 
making cookies or whatever it was we were working on. So you want to get it as thin as you can. And what I'm going to do, actually, I think, and you can do it however you want to. I have a little round cookie cutter in here. I'm going to do mine round. If you have a square one, you can use square. You can do whatever you want to. But I'm going to use my round one. And I am going to put them on my cast iron skillet. Now, you can use a... Uh, if you have like a pizza stone or, or something like that, you can use a baking sheet if you want to. I would spray it with um, some non-stick cooking spray of some sort because these are really thin and they are going to cook pretty fast. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can get one more out of this. I'll have a little pan open. You gotta make sure you have enough for everybody. And I have a feeling that these might actually be better than the ones we have at church. <laughs> so, let's see what we can do here. All right, one more there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush these a little bit with water. No butter, nothing special about them. And we are going to put a little bit of salt on there. And all the, let's turn that. All the water does is just help the salt stick to your bread. Okay? So we're gonna put them in the oven. Now you want to pay um, good attention to this because like I said, it is gonna cook pretty fast. So I would check them about every minute and see how they're doing. All right, so they have been baking for about two minutes. I'm actually gonna take them and flip them over. Just making sure that we don't burn them. So I'm gonna, whew, they're hot. <laughs> I'm gonna put them in for another couple of minutes and they should be done. All right, it looks like we have some unleavened bread all ready to go. So, get these really quick. Um, they actually look pretty crispy. Just gonna put them on here. Now, two cups of flour is gonna make a whole lot more than what we made today. So, you may have to adjust that according to your family and how many uh, you have but so there you have it it's just that simple to make unleavened bread for your family so we hope that you will join us this sunday at 10 15 to observe the lord's supper and baptism with us we're looking forward to a great time together and i'm actually going to try one of these and see hmm, that's not too bad see you sunday